Hi uh, guys, this is Tekken57 and this is video tutorial 3. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to import parts from uh, older models into the newer models. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me how I've done uh, the uh, import of Jeff Hardy's head from the 2011 model into the newer model format. I'm going to be covering that in this tutorial. This is quite an advanced tutorial, so if you haven't attempted tutorial 1 and tutorial 2, Please go and familiarize yourself with that. You are also going to be required to use a hex editor for the purpose of this tutorial. So if you're not familiar with that, take some time and learn how to use a hex editor. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you how to convert uh, the Jeff Hardy model into the newer model format. Now you will notice in X-Ray there are two menu options to open models. First is new format, and the second is old format. Um, if you if you open the Jeff Hardy model, you would at the moment you'll be required to open it using the old format menu item. So it's open, all right. If you try to open this model with the new model format uh, option, you will get an error. All right. This is because the format is different, the headers are different, so forth. Alright, so in order for our export and import to work, we need to convert this to the newer model format, which will convert the header and the actual objects. So we click on Utilities, Convert 2010-2011 model. Alright, we select the Jeff Hardy 2009 object file. Alright, now this process takes uh, quite a while to complete because it's doing a number of things. The first thing it will need to do is uh, convert the header format because the header formats are completely different between uh, the, the models. Uh, it will also need to uh, convert each of the objects uh, within the model to the new model format. Um, there's a large, large amount of data which is contained in the newer models which is not contained in the older models. Alright, so the conversion is complete. So now if we try and open the converted model using the new model format, which is the JFI 2009 converted wild file, it should open without any errors. Alright, this means that the JFRD model has now been converted to the new format. Now, this does not mean that you can use this model in-game. Uh, there are a number of things within this model which are not compatible with the new format. Uh, the bones are completely different. It uses completely different shaders, shader parameters, etc. Uh, I could not write a conversion script that would convert these. So, the, the, uh, the second best thing we can do is to try and extract just the head out of the object and inject it into, a, a, into another uh, model from the uh, newer games uh, and try and get that to work in there. Now, if you look at uh, this model, there are a number of different objects uh, in it. We need to try and find the head object. Alright, so let's find the head object. Alright, so we found it. It's object 6, and if you look at the amount of vertices, it's 1,447. Uh, this is quite a large number of vertices, and uh, you will find it difficult to try and actually find a model which has more vertices than this. So, I've searched through a number of models, and I found that the WWE 12 models actually work the best. The reason for this is because uh, the way the WWE 12 models are rigged, they are uh, more objects which are grouped together, having a larger number of vertices. With the with the games after 2012, they tend to break the objects up into smaller objects, with each having a smaller number of verts. But it's up to you. You could find any model that, that can accommodate this number of verts. All right. So, um, what we need to do is we need we're going to need to extract and inject smaller just like we did before. However, there's one thing we need to do before that. Um, one of the other major differences between the old models and the new models is the scale of the model, meaning the size of the model. The size of the older models uh, versus the size of the new models uh, is 10 times difference in scale. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to scale the old model up first before we can inject it into the new model. Alright, so I'm going to go into 3D Studio Max and I'm going to open the converted model this time. Right, 
So the model has been loaded into 3D Studio Max. I, if I import the uh, the model that I'm going to be importing into, which is a Kevin Nash WLB 12 model, you'll see the difference in size. All right. So as you can see, the Nash model is about 10 times bigger than the Jeff Hardy model, which is there. All right. So we need to scale the Jeff Hardy model up. Now we don't need to scale all of the objects up because we're only going to be taking the head of the Jeff Hardy model. So I'm only going to scale that all that, that <coughs> excuse me that object up. Alright, so we open the Jeff Hardy model again. I'm going to select the head object, which is there, and I'm going to export this. All right, I'm going to call it object 6 big, because it's 10 times bigger. Okay, the settings that you're going to use for exporting is exactly the same that you've been using all along for exporting objects for use in X-ray. The only difference is that we now need to change the scale from 1 to 10. All right, this means that the object will be exported and made 10 times bigger. I'm going to export, and it is done. Alright, now we go into actually, and we need to import the bigger head model. Alright, so we're going to hit import, and then object 6 big, which is the one we've just created. Alright, so now you can see the head is 10 times bigger than the rest of the model. So, we don't need to worry about the rest of the model because we are only using the head. Alright, so, now the head is ready for uh, to be injected into the Nash model. So I'm going to hit extract just as before. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and you extract the header and the object info. Um, okay, I've already done this. And the files are yeah. and info and the object info. Alright, now usually we would just inject this directly into the model that we're going to be uh, that we're going to be using. However, there are a number of things that need to be done before this as well. So firstly, let's, let's identify um, where we're going to inject it into the Nash model. Alright, um, so you need to find something that has greater than 1,400 small vertices. Um, object 7 in the Nash model, which is expansive object, 1,600 vertices should do the trick. Uh, like I said, you've got to do quite a bit of trial and error before you can identify a model which you can do this. Um, the vertices may be greater, but sometimes the faces are not greater, as I discussed in previous tutorials. All right, uh, I've done a number of models, and I came across the Nash model, and that's why I'm using this one. All right, so now we need to uh, use the inject smaller function to inject the head into this. But before we, before we do that, uh, we need to edit something in, in a hex editor. Uh, with WWE 2011, uh, the way in which the bonds were rigged to the objects is completely different from the way in which the bonds were rigged in WW2012. So what this means is that if you do not rig the bonds correctly, uh, the object will either be corrupted or it will move completely incorrectly from the rest of the model. Usually it ends up uh, corrupted and it doesn't even look like a face or anything. For that matter. So what we need to do is we need to find another object which is more or less the same type of object in the Nash model and which is in the same position more or less so that we can uh, assign those bone mappings to the Jeff Hardy object. So let's try and find uh, the head object in the Nash model so we can copy the bone mappings to it. Alright, so it's object 10. Alright, so now we need to copy the bone mappings from here. So we click extract. And you click on extract, it will create the object info and the header info for object 10. Alright, I've done this already. So if we go into the uh, header info for object 10, it's going to open this up. Alright, um, now basically from bytes. 
8 to uh, by 12, this contains uh, the information detailing how many bonds uh, are mapped for this object. So if you look at this, there are 40, which is in hex, we need to convert that to decimal. This tells you how many bonds are mapped to that specific object. All right, so we need to copy the bond mappings here into the Jeff Hardy uh, head object. Okay, the Jeff Hardy head object was object 6. All right, I just want to show you guys where the bond mappings end as well. So I've extracted uh, object 9 from Nash's model, which is his belt. This should show you where the bond mappings end. So if I open up object 9, you don't need to do this, but I just want to illustrate to you. All right. Uh, the section that I've highlighted is uh, containing the number of bones and which bones are mapped to that object. Uh, this is bytes 8 to bytes 91. All right. If you look here, it'll tell you there are four bones which are mapped uh, to this object, which is the belt object. Um, so you've got 0F, 05, 03, 08. Those are the IDs of the bonds that are mapped to this object. All right, so we don't need to use object 9. I just open it to illustrate to you. So now we need to go to object 10. And we need to copy all of the bond mappings from here. All right, so from there to... So it's 8 to 91. 8 to 91. All right, so object 9 is not required. So this is all the bond information that is required, and we need to copy this into the edit info for Jeff Hardy's head. All right, so I'm going to copy this, and we're going to remove the old bond mappings from 8 to 91 here. We're going to remove the old bone information. Okay. We're going to copy the bone information over here. Right. And we posted, uh, sorry, we pasted the bone information from Nash's skull into. Uh, Jeff Hardy's All right, let's save. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So now we are ready to import Jeff Hardy's head into Nash's model. All right, so we're going to Nash's model um, and we use inject smaller function and we inject object 6 on here, which we just edited. Alright, if you've done this correctly, you should find Jeff Hardy's head injected into Kevin Nash's model. Now, obviously, you can see that the pants object is missing. So, the, in the way in which I overcame this is that I've used a created a part for the pants, which I've injected in, into a separate Y object part. Um, now, as you can see, this model now has two heads, and the positioning of the Jeff Hardy head is off. Also, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Jeff Hardy head is missing in the right side of the face, as you can see. Now, I could not import uh, the right side of the face uh, because that part of the model was rigged to uh, quite a few other objects. For the Jeff Hardy model, it was rigged to his arms and his shoulders as well. And you, you can't import head, uh, shoulders and arms and that sort of thing because it will conflict with the existing model. It may work, but you're going to have arms which are going to be floating all over the place. You also need to find another uh, object within a Nash model which is able to accom accommodate that number of vertices, which is very unlikely. Alright, so let's open this model in 3D Studio Max and try and get this head position correctly. Let's select this object. Uh, 
and now we need to position socket okay, okay, within the model. I'm just going to do it after this doing the stage with this. Alright. So now that the head object is there, uh, you can scale down all of the other objects on the Nash model, which is required. You don't require the skunk, for instance. So you can scale that down, find it within the jet body head. Alright, there are certain parts of the Nash face which you're going to be required to use in order to cover up the holes in the J part of this. For instance, if you look at this area here, you're going to need to use the Nash model to try and cover up that space. Now, what I did for my, my mode was that I used Topo Gun. I used the Jeff Hardy head from 2011 as a base, and I reshaped the parts of the Nash's face to fit into this object. So, this is going to be quite a lengthy tutorial if I'm going to actually show you guys how to use Topo Gun and that sort of thing. So, I expect you guys to be able to figure that out on your own. Alright, so once you position the head, let's export that. Um, I don't know what object number that was again. Like so. Alright. Like so. I forgot to change the scale down. Um, let's do that again. Um, change the scale from 10 to 1. Because the head is actually the right size. Alright, so now the J party head is. Uh, Injected into the Nash model and it's placed correctly. Um, like I said, you're going to have to hide all the objects of the Nash face, which is not required, and shape the other parts of the face, which is required. Alright, so that's about it for the tutorial. Uh, I just want to say that this is a very experimental process because uh, the, the model is not actually meant to do this, the type of things that we're doing. We're actually trying to hack parts from other models into newer models. The formats are not always 100% compatible. Uh, sometimes the bone mapping works, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes the objects just cause the game to crash as well. So this is very, very experimental at this stage. And uh, I encourage you guys to try it. Uh, it takes a lot of time to get uh, this type of hack working, but uh, some persistence actually does put, uh, pay off at the end. So give it a try and uh, post your results on the forums. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about it, please post in the thread or on my YouTube.